What's up everybody? Today we're going to be reviewing the Sony CX405 camcorder. How good is it? Is it pretty good? Is it worth the $229 price point? What are all the features of this camera? Stick around and find out. That's next on Mike's World. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mike's World, and today we are going to unbox and review the Sony HDR CX405 camera. Um, we'll see how good this is. In a previous video, I uh, reviewed the Ultramax HD. Just to a quick recap, um, I work at a TV station, order equipment often, and we have been buying dash cams for our field crews. Tried out the Ultramax, was very, very disappointed with it, so decided to pick up the Sony. Let's see how much better it is. Uh, the Sony's, to, in my opinion, I have always been a lifelong fan of Sony's. I think they make the best cameras on the market, both consumer and professional. Um, but not gonna let that sway my opinion on this one. Uh, we are gonna completely go through this, the menus, everything it can do, uh, and I'll give you my, my, uh, my honest opinion on it. So pick this up for $229 at bhphotovideo.com and it actually came with a free bag. How about that? It came with the kit. So, you know, not much to the bag. Bag is a bag, we're not gonna review the bag, but it did come free with the bundle. And right now, currently, at this point, you can still get the bag with the camera if you order it. So, but let's go ahead and start unboxing the CX405 and see what comes in the box. All right, so here is the box for the CX405 from Sony. Um, just taking a look at a few things on it. Um, looks like it comes, you can see on the side of the box, maybe some free editing software included with it. Um, I think you have to use a QR code to download it. There's some information on the side of the box. I'll try to keep the glare to a minimum if I can. Um, and let's see, it can shoot up to 9.2 megapixel stills, 60 time clear image zoom, uh, 26.8 millimeter wide angle lens. That's pretty good. Um, we'll see what that looks like. And it can record up to 50 megabits per second and dual recording, MP4 recording. So, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I guess the MP4 would be the proxy video. So let's see what all is in the box. So First thing is, of course, we get the little limited warranty. We get a Sony Handycam, all the accessories you can get. Show you that. Um, looks like whatever this is. Some, some more stuff that's not in English, AC adapter or something. And what do we have here? Uh, you get a thousand dollar prepaid Visa card. Uh, okay, we can try that. And continuing on, uh, looks like we have user manual in English, which is always good. Have user manual in English. And we also get one in, it looks like French, but I don't know for sure. That one is gonna be useless for me. English one, um, you know, you can flip through this later and look at it. But what we are interested in is what is in this box right here. So let's see what is in the box. So we'll start out with the camera wrapped in some kind of white plastic, kind of like a fabric plastic. It's kind of weird. So here we go. Here is the Sony CX350. Pull the box out of the way for a second. So not much to it. It's a very, very light. Let's open it up and it doesn't come on. So either the battery is not in there or it's not charged because most of these cameras you open it up and it just comes on. Looks like we have a menu joystick here. Looks like the play button, I guess that's to pull up your video. And what's this door say? HDMI and micro SDXC. This is all right here on the side, I'm reading that. So there's a little door here. And that says HDMI, um, looks like the Sony 
duo cards and it just flips down. So flip down and it looks like it's the micro HDMI. So some cameras have uh, the mini and this looks like it has the micro. So that would be the same HDMI cable that some of the older GoPros use. And then there's a slot for an SD card right here, right there. So that looks like it. that's it. I mean, there's nothing else. Uh, we have the zoom rocker on the top right here and a photo button because it takes photos. And check this out. So on the side, it actually has a built-in cover, which is nice. It's better than the caps that go on and off. So uh, record, start, stop here on the side. And then, oh, what is this? That is a USB cable tucked into the hand strap. Uh, okay, well, we'll see what that does a little bit later on. But it just tucks right in there. It doesn't look like it's connecting to anything, so maybe it's, I don't know. We'll just see. We'll see. Um, but that's about it. That's, that's the camera, what it looks like. Just looking all the way around. And then, oh, there is a, okay. There's a door. It looks like the battery goes battery there's a door on the bottom looks like the battery goes in here and then I see something else that I'm interested in there's a little door here on the side underneath the hand strap that says I don't know if you can see it but it says multi so what does that have it flips open it looks like a USB port so I have to look at the manual and see what that's for looks like a micro USB port but we have the USB in the strap here so not sure but that's the camera uh, I'll tell you what this thing weighs nothing super super light okay let's get that out of the way let's see what else is in the box what is in the box we have a an adapter so USB to AC American. So we have that. We have a USB cable. What is in this USB cable? Well, this is interesting. So we have USB on one end and a female USB on the other. So my guess is that the USB cable in the handle of the camera plugs into this and then um, this plugs into your computer would be my guess so I have to look at the manual and see and it comes with an HDMI cable how about that mini HDMI to HDMI so at least it comes with a cable that's great because you know in the past ca cameras didn't come with HDMI cables and they're starting to add those so and you know what um, oh one more thing good thing I didn't throw away the box Looks like the battery. So it comes with a this small small battery. That is a NPBX1. Actually, I saw that on the side of the box somewhere. Where did I see that? Yep. So here on the side of the box, right here, is some battery information, and it says you get 115 minutes with an NPBX1 battery. So that's this battery. So I guess fully charged, you should get 115 minutes. And I'm assuming you can buy more of these and have them on hand. It's, you know, these cameras, this, the Ultramax was like this too. It had a weird battery. They don't have the little pop-on batteries on the back like they used to where it's just a quick switch. So now they're, all, they're hidden. And this one go, clearly goes in here. I wonder if it's charged. I'm guessing it's not, but let's see. Um, there's an arrow tells you which direction to go and there's a little clip here holds it in place and let's open the camera oh it's powering up so there's something there I'll turn around real quick it says English I'll try to do this so we're going to set it for English did it do it? Because I don't think it did. Nope. 
English. Oh, then there's a next. Next button down there. And it looks like time zone. We are Chicago. Chicago, Mexico City. Go to next. So this is all the initial setup stuff. What else? What's it doing now? Daylight savings time is on. And I guess next. Sorry, I'm pulling the camera away because I can't really see what's going on. Let me flip it down here. Year, month, day, day, month, year. Let's do day, day, month, and year. This is the next screen. And I guess I just cl click OK or close it. And it's hard to see in the glare. Um, once we get into looking at the camera and the functions and everything, I will uh, we'll do this in a better spot so you can see better. But looks like the battery is almost dead anyway. So uh, battery was not charged when we got it. So, but that is it. That's what comes with it. So you get the camera, you get an HDMI cable, you get a USB cable, which clearly plugs into there. And I would, I'm, I'm guessing the USB cable is how you charge it. You might have to look at the manual. And then because we get the USB to AC adapter, so I'm guessing that that's, this is also the power cable. So, but we'll take, take a look at that. Anyway, that's the unboxing of the CX405. Now it's time to get it out, start shooting some video and seeing what the footage looks like and then going through the menu as well. But first things I gotta do is get this thing plugged in, let it charge, see how long it takes. Uh, I'll let you know that when we come back. All right, so let's take a look at the menus on the Sony CX405. And we're gonna take, you're taking a look at the LCD. I'm shooting this with a Canon Vixia R800. Uh, it's kind of the camera I go to as far as small consumer cameras, has mic input, all that, but that's for another time to talk about. But let's take a look at the menu for the CX350. So it does have the joystick on the left, and you can see that just under nor normal circumstances, you have the menu, but it's kind of clean. So what this does is, your menus come up on screen, but after you can set it for a minute, two minutes, it'll actually turn off and you have a clean screen. Um, and so you'll see in the middle of it, it's flashing a little icon and that just means I don't have an SD card in it right now. But if we hit the menu button, if we push in on the joystick, the menus pop up. So under shooting mode, we can change that from movie or photo. And we're, of course, in movie mode. And you have these, uh, if you notice, if you push down, you get what they call these hot buttons right here. And of course, it goes away. Um, but let's go back to the menu. And let's go down to camera. It's hard to. So you have white balance, exposure, focus, iris, all these are on auto right now, but these can all be moved to manual. Shutter speed, and if we click on that, auto or manual, go to manual, and down, you can down, move down here plus or minus, and you can increase your shutter speed. We'll just go back to auto for now, but you can mainly control shutter, which is pretty awesome. Low Lux, this is shooting at night. I'll tell you right now, you're gonna see some footage here in a minute. Um, this camera is probably the best small handheld camera that I've ever used in low light. And I'll show you with some dash cam when it was raining, that'll be coming up shortly. But um, of all the cameras, this is probably the best one that I've ever used in low light. Scene selection, picture effect. We have a fader if you want it, a self timer. Steady shot. Now, if you go into steady shot, and a lot of this depends on the format you're in or whatever, and I'm going to change that here in a second, but it has intelligent active, active, standard, and off. We'll just leave it on active for now. Digital zoom, up to 350 time digital zoom. If you're a quality 
person like me, you're never going to use digital zoom. Uh, it degrades the quality as you zoom in. Auto backlight, let's actually turn that off. That's the one thing, you can't go back, it ends up just kind of knocking you out. Digital zoom, auto backlight, we already talked about. Face detection is available. Smile shutter, smile sensitivity, a built-in zoom mic. So as you zoom in, it zooms in on the audio. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I had that on before, let's see. Wind noise reduction is available. mic level that's I guess if you're in manual my button okay so my button there are three buttons on the left side of the screen that when you hit the down on the on the uh, little joystick those pop up and you can set what these are and what those what that does is it allows you to quickly change uh, that setting really quickly so for instance for me I what I use where is it at steady shot and I assign that to the first button then I want to use uh, focus and I'll assign that to the second button and the other one is white balance and I'm going to assign that to the bottom okay so why well to be honest with you um, having already done a little bit of testing the auto white balance on this camera is not very good at all. That being said, uh, you can manually set the white balance on this camera. So let's get out of this. So the screen will go away in a second. If I hit down, it all pops back up, it tells me what I'm shooting in, all that kind of stuff. And if I go down, I can change the white balance. I can go to outdoor, I can go indoor, or I can manually set it and it manually sets the white balance. I'll leave it in auto just for now, just because we're playing around with the menus. Uh, you'll see some video here in just a little bit. Um, so let's go back to the menu, get to the rest of this stuff. Grid lines if you need help shooting. Display settings, um, sets the display of the shooting screen. So you can, you can set it so it stays on. So we'll just do that. And then it stays on all the time and it won't, uh, won't leave the screen. Uh, let's go back in there. And that's it. That's all the settings. Now you can go over here to image or quality size and record mode. So it's in high quality, which um, I'll show you in a second. You have LP for long play, standard, high quality, and highest quality. Now the other thing with this frame rate. You can choose between 60i or 60p, which is good. Let's change it to 60p. Dual video record. So this means it's going to record as both MP4 and whatever you set, whether it's XAVC or AVC HD. Um, really, it fills up your card faster. I just turn it off. I mean, if you want MP4, which can be easily used immediately with an iPhone or on the web, you may want to leave that on. Just depends on what you're using it for. Let's go back to that image quality. File format, we are currently set on AVC HD. Like I said, you can set it to X AVC HD. That is essentially one of Sony's professional formats. So that is an option. You can go to that if you want. The consumer standard AVC HD. Um, if you're using like a just a cheap editor, a consumer editor, XAVC probably won't work in that. Um, if you're using a professional editor like Adobe Premiere, Avid, something like that, then you could, should maybe shoot on XAVC HD, although that is going to be a higher format and it's going to take up a lot more space on your card so you get less shooting time. Image size, this is for the still photos. I mean, might as well put it at 9.2, even though I'll probably never use it. What else is in here? And that's it. So you can set your quality at ABC HD, high quality. It shoots, I believe, 17 megabits per second. Um, 
and I believe standard is nine and long run is four megabits per second. And then of course the highest quality is all the way up to 50 megabits per second. Um, get out of here, playback function. So there's no clips there, but that you could go to that. There's also a little button on right here where you can just press it and it goes to the thumbnails. Edit, delete, protect your images uh, or files. And then there's setup. You can format your card, repair. You can set the file, how your files will be named, uh, data code, volume. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Download music, empty music. So uh, this one, 16 by 9 HDMI resolution. You can set the output, which is very interesting. So you can output 720p. Uh, interesting. Uh, you know, not even my Canon can, you can set the output. So that's, that's really good, but you can manually set that for what you want. That's pretty cool. Um, control for HDMI, on or off. Uh, all that basically means is you plug HDMI into the TV, and, or you're plugged into a TV, and when you select HDMI, it, it controls it. I actually don't like that, so we're gonna turn that off. USB. Connect settings, power supply on, a um, lot of extra, the beeping you can turn off if you want, monitor brightness, power save, I'm going to turn that off. What that means is, if you're using your camera set up to live stream or something, power save means it automatically shuts off as, after a certain amount of time, and I don't see ever any use for that. Um, there is a demo mode, that should be off. So there you go. That is essentially the entire menu screen uh, for this camera. And go back to movie mode. And there we are. So if I put an SD card in there, I'm pretty much ready to shoot. Um, so let's take a look at the footage I've shot. Some of it just standard footage, some of it me walking around in active uh, steady mode, in selfie mode for vlogging, things like that. Let's take a look at what all that footage looks like and what I think of the camera. All right. So we'll see how this thing looks with the stabilizer. See if it's jello. So, man, that looks, that's pretty good at, in the dark. Steady, I may have to get these for me. Wow, that is pretty impressive. Okay, so this clip I'm recording, the image stabilizer is completely off. Completely off. So I want to see, I want to see how steady the video is, but I can, I'd. Looking at the LCD screen, I mean, I can see so much more than what I could ever see with my previous camera. So, looks really good. All right, it's late at night, it's really dark out. Um, walking my dog. I've got the stabilizer on Intelligent Active and I've got the tub. It's wet. It's been raining, storming. Just had a little bit more lightning. And of course, I'm shooting this handheld with one hand. Got a little mini tripod hooked to the bottom of the camera. And I'm just one hand on the camera. One hand on the leash walking my dog. Let's see if we get some more lightning. Just doing a walk around the neighborhood and see what it looks like with the intelligent active stabilizer. It's somewhat close to what I'm seeing in the LCD screen. Um, 
figure it's going to lose focus here and there just because it is such low light. Um, but I'm not going to switch to manual. I just want to see what it looks like. So there's full wide. So you can't really see me right now. Got a silhouette, but I'll do a test in the daytime as well and see what it looks like, how stable it is. What I really like is the camera has a wide angle lens. It's pretty wide. So, you know, it's it's I don't have an extra external light or anything on this. I didn't I wanted to test it without. Um, and it's pretty dark right now, you probably can't even see me, but what I wanted to do is I'll test this during the day, walk her again tomorrow, and I want to see how steady it is because with the wide angle in the lens, it looks like it's perfect for vlogging or, uh, you know, selfie mode like this. So I've just got a little Manfrotto table tripod connected to the bottom of the camera and we're walking. It's in intelligent, active stabilizer mode and I'm holding it with one hand. So not the stablest. Here I am coming into view. we got another street light coming up. So again, holding it with one hand connected to a Manfrotto table tripod to the bottom of the camera. Walking my dog through the neighborhood. So we'll see how stable it is. Stop for a second. So you can see my dog. But looks like with the wide angle it's great for selfies vlogging things like that so we'll see so we'll do this again uh, when it gets daylight and we'll test it out in the daytime All right, so let's do a zoom test on this. We're set up right by my house. Let's see how far it zooms in. And so that's on uh, standard, uh, the standard setting for optical image stabilizer. Uh, once you get the intelligent or active, it gets a little jelloey when you zoom in, so turn that off. But you can see, zoomed all the way in down the street to the neighbor's house. I'll zoom all the way back out. So, pretty good zoom on this thing. All right, so it's now daytime. Um, I've got the intelligent stabilizer on. I'm holding the camera one hand with the Manfrotto little table tripod connected um, to this Sony CX405. I'm just walking along and I'm zoomed all the way out so you can see how wide it is. Uh, plenty for vlogging, selfie, videos, things, things like that. You can hear what the audio sounds like directly to the camera. Um, so I'm gonna switch hands here. My hands are getting tired, but so just walking along here. Um, it's morning. I'm not gonna walk any further because there's a puddle right there. Um, I don't know if you can see it. it doesn't matter, but um, it just the storm's just finished going through. Uh, so it's really wet, really raining out. And um, but just walking along here, just getting a few shots outside show you what it looks like. I'm, I'm manually white balanced. I will say the camera, terrible auto white balance. So, but it has great preset settings um, and it has uh, the manual control as well. Whole bunch of manual controls on this thing. Love this camera, honestly. I'm gonna, um, I, I just love it. I think for $229, it is fantastic. I'd say this camera could easily sell for 350 with all the features it has. The only thing it doesn't have is built-in microphone import where you could plug in an external mic 
Um, it doesn't have a cold shoe for an adapter. I mean, it really is just a handheld camcorder. Um, but overall, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think it's pretty good, and I think it's absolutely worth the $229. Okay, so overall, I would have to give the CX405 a grade of A-. I think it's an excellent camera. It's perfect for the price point. I don't think you can get a better camera at this uh, price, to be honest with you. The only reason I wouldn't give it higher than that grade is it doesn't have a cold shoe, and it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter audio input. And really, if you're going to grade a camera that high, it should have those items. But at the $229 price point, you can't go wrong. It's incredible in low light compared to any of the other camcorders that I've tested that are consumer camcorders. So um, it's pretty amazing, really, I mean, given the specs of the camera. So overall, A-, minus. I think it's well worth the money. Go check it out. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit that like button, and always leave a comment and love to hear from you. So that's it. Take care. We'll see you next time.